Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Trenhale. I'd like to take a few moments to discuss with you some important aspects about your upcoming surgery. Please feel free to stop the video and take notes so that we can address your concerns prior to your procedure. Hello, I'm Michael Gilbertson, Dr. Trenhale's physician assistant. I'll be assisting Dr. Trenhale the day of your surgery. On this day, please come to the procedure with a driver that can stay throughout the entirety of your care if an outpatient procedure is to be performed. Please make sure to wear loose-fitting clothing that is easy to put on after the procedure. An oversized button-down shirt seems to work best the day of the surgery as it will be more comfortably fit and easy to take on and off and it will fit easily over your pillow sling. Once you enter the preoperative holding area, you'll be asked to change into a gown and a nurse will place an IV. In the holding area, you'll meet with the anesthesiologist. This is your opportunity to discuss the type of anesthetic you'll be receiving for your procedure. Shoulder surgery patients typically receive general anesthesia in which you will be completely asleep. In addition, it is usually recommended that a regional nerve block also be given in combination to the general anesthetic. The block consists of an injection that is given above the collarbone on the operative shoulder after a sedative is given. During the block, you will be able to breathe on your own, but be unaware that the block procedure is taking place. Generally, I recommend this nerve block as it should provide shoulder and arm numbness that typically lasts about 12 to 24 hours in duration. It is not uncommon for you to still experiencing some numbness and tingling in the fingertips on the first post-operative day. This block will allow for you to start your oral pain medication at home as directed while the nerve block wears off. Starting the oral pain medication as the feeling in the arm begins to return allows for a smooth transition between the regional block and the oral pain medication. Side effects of the block also include not only the numbness in the shoulder and arm, but also the inability to move your elbow, hand, and fingers. The inability to move the arm typically resolves when the feeling returns or possibly sooner. It is very common for patients to experience some pain in the armpit region after surgery as the nerve block does not provide complete relief of pain in this area. In the preoperative holding area, Dr. Trenhill will come and meet with you and sign your surgical site. At this time, you will have the opportunity to ask any final questions before you receive any sedatives or anesthetic medications. The nerve block will then be done, followed by your shoulder procedure. The surgery itself is an arthroscopic procedure which requires the use of multiple portals placed around the shoulder. The portals are small incisions in the skin, about a quarter of an inch in length, which allow access to various compartments of the shoulder. A diagnostic arthroscopy is performed and photographs of the shoulder are then taken. You will receive a copy of the photographs on your first post-operative visit in the clinic. If a rotator cuff tendon repair is required, we will be using implants called suture anchors. These devices go into the humerus bone and have sutures attached to allow for the attachment of the tendon to the bone. These anchors are made from absorbable or non-absorbable plastic. Occasionally, an all suture material or metal anchor may be used. The specific type of anchor is chosen at the time of surgery based on your particular needs. These implants may or may not absorb over time, but should never need to be removed. There may be other procedures performed during the rotator cuff repair. These procedures may include a subacromial decompression or distal clavicle excision to remove bone spurs and or arthritis, a biceps tenodesis if there was a problem with the bicep tendon, or a joint debridement. These additional procedures will not typically lengthen your recovery from a rotator cuff repair, but may be done to eliminate pain generators of the shoulder. We can provide you with more information regarding these procedures. If a cartilage tear is found, known as a labral tear, this may require a repair or simply debridement or cleaning up of the tissue, depending on your particular problem. Labral suture anchors are placed into the glenoid bone, which is the socket portion of the shoulder, and this allows us to connect the labrum back to the bone. For more information on these types of procedures, please see Dr. Trenhill's videos on his YouTube channel. The surgical portion of your procedure should take about an hour to complete. After surgery, you will be placed in a pillow sling. This will need to be worn constantly until the nerve block has worn off in order to protect your shoulder, elbow, and hand. Plan on wearing the sling for approximately six weeks after surgery if any type of repair of the soft tissue was performed in your shoulder. 
This would include a rotator cuff repair, labral repair, or biceps tendesis. If only a debridement was performed, such as a subacromial decompression, distal clavicle excision, selective release, or joint debridement, the sling may be used for comfort only as needed. You will be given written instructions before leaving the facility on the day of your surgery detailing the limitations that are specific to your procedure. A white absorbent dressing will be placed over your shoulder. The dressing is applied to keep the portals clean during the healing process. Immediately after surgery, the fluid that is used to distend the shoulder will leak from the portals and is absorbed into this bandage. Occasionally, the fluid will leak beneath the bandage and a towel can be placed under the arm to soak up the fluid. The bandage should not be removed, but instead reinforced with more bandages or a towel. Occasionally, the fluid that comes out of the shoulder is blood tinged in color. Please don't be alarmed as this is fairly common. If you have any questions or concerns about the amount of drainage that is occurring, please call the number that is provided to you. The absorbent bandage may be completely removed 48 hours after surgery and you may take a brief shower at this time. The sling is removed and the operative arm is allowed to hang down by your side. The arm is safe as long as you do not attempt to move it in any direction. Bending at the waist allows your arm to move away from your body using gravity. This allows safe access to the axilla or armpit for cleaning. These are called pendulum exercises. At this point in your recovery, I do not recommend any prolonged exposure to water, including bathtubs, swimming pools, or hot tubs. After the shower, you may towel dry the surgical site, apply band-aids to the surgical incisions, do not try to clean the operative soap from your shoulder as it has to exfoliate or wear off with time. Whether there was a repair or not, there are times when the sling can be removed. It is safe to remove the sling while seated in a chair, using a computer, feeding yourself, or using the restroom. We typically use the analogy of squeezing a pen in the armpit. This allows you to have access to your elbow, hand, and fingers while keeping the arm by your side. If you move your arm away from your side, the pen would fall. As we mentioned earlier, you will need to remove the sling to take a shower. At all other times, it is important that you wear the sling for activities including walking and sleeping. Avoid exercise and driving until you are seen back in the office at 7 to 10 days after surgery. Further recommendations may be given on your first postoperative appointment. During this visit, we will discuss with you the arthroscopic photos that we have taken at the time of your surgery and also discuss the next steps of your rehabilitation process, including when to initiate physical therapy. Therapy will begin as early as 10 days or as late as six weeks postoperatively, depending on what was found at the time of your surgery. You may have sutures that will be removed at this visit as well. While each circumstance is unique, patients are typically prescribed postoperative pain medication and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. We will provide you the prescription of your pain medicine today to assure timely filling of the medication prior to surgery. We ask that you please do not take the pain medication until after the completion of your surgery. These medications are for home use only and will not need to be brought with you on the day of your surgery. The medications are chosen so that they may be taken together safely as long as you follow the directions on the pill bottles from the pharmacy. Basic risks associated with any surgery include, but are not limited to, things like blood clots, infections, failure of the procedure, implants, nerve damage, and need to repeat surgery. You will be given a dose of antibiotics through your IV before the surgery to reduce your risk of infections. If you are experiencing fevers, chills, night sweats, or excessive draining from the incisions, please call the office immediately. As we get closer to your surgical date, your time for surgery will be released. If your surgery is on a Monday, you will receive a call from our office prior to 3 p.m. on the Friday preceding. For all other surgery dates, you will be notified by 3 p.m. the day before your surgery. It is important that you inform our healthcare team of all medications that you take on a regular basis, including supplements and over-the-counter medications. You may be asked to stop some of these medications prior to surgery. Remember, nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before your surgery. Thank you for your attention, and we will now be in to answer any further questions that you have.